So. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. <laughs> it's it's fantastic to see you. So Cassandra, this is uh, Masara. He goes by the the um, professional name of Mr. Move It. He's one of the most interesting people I've ever met. Um, Masara, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yes, um, my name is Masara, like mascara without yeah. the C, right? <laughs> And it's a lovely name, but um, many, many moons ago, uh, 29 years ago, the ladies decided to give me the nickname Mr. Move It. And I said, but I prefer Masara. They said, no, but you're Mr. Move It. And I said, what? but why? I said, why? He said, yeah, because you move people. <laughs> you, you literally move people, you know? And um, the more I resisted, the more I got the name. Okay. So, so when the pandemic hit and I came online for the first time in this form, and I said, my name is Mr. Move It. Everybody said, don't you have a real name? <laughs> Why do you call yourself Mr. Move It? Yeah. And I was going like, oh, world. So I decided to stick to Mr. Move It. So I'm Mr. Move It. And, um, and I live up to my name in many ways. <laughs> love, love meeting you, Masara. I love yeah. meeting you. You know what I love about your introduction, Masara, is you start with a story. And it helps us connect to you like right away. I love that. <laughs> I met I met Cassandra in um, uh, a program uh, that a few friends of mine put together. Uh, they're great coaches. Um, Matt and Luz have the um, monetize um, industry icon uh, program and met her there. Uh, Cassandra, do you want to introduce yourself um, and just kind of share what you do? Sure. So I, the, my practice is um, coaching and what I try to do is help single moms, single dads um, that have teens, help them be healthy, help the kids be healthy. Um, I bring all the studies I have from um, just going through my own process. So I'm an acupuncturist, I'm a nuke med tech. Um, I put all that together to help bring it to the table with coaching and um, just bringing different aspects. And I'm a martial artist as well. So I bring the mindset plus the compassion, plus the courage, plus experience. Hmm. What type of martial arts do you do? So Tai Chi and I do black belt. I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, but I have um, done some levels of Aikido, but I wasn't really good at, at, at the uh, somersaulting. So <laughs> I said, I was doing it at about 38 and I'm like, you know what? This is too hard on my hips. I'm like, when you don't land, right? I was like, oh no, I don't want to hurt my back. <laughs> I have three kids of my own. So I'm a first time grandma. So I have an 18 month old granddaughter and then um, a second son who's in Paris, and then a daughter who's here who's finished college too. So they've all gone through college. And uh, so, yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I have a few students I trained to black belt who are about oh. to quit martial arts, Shotokan karate. And, oh, um, yeah, wow. Yeah. Very and, good. Yes, and um, 34 years ago today, I was in Japan for two weeks at a Gashku training camp. Wow. Uh, because we were told by the Japanese instructor that if you want the real thing, you gotta go to Japan. And yeah. there you're gonna get the real thing. You won't have no Mickey Mouse stuff. Right. So right, right. we decided we wanted to know, we know, and we found out, we found out. <laughs> what was it like compared to what you were getting here? Um, the biggest difference? My first, my first vision was they cannot train like this all the time because they all have eyes, nose, noses, mouths, they had teeth. You know, it could not be that that's the way they train all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So the biggest difference is the mindset, the culture, right? you know? And what I really love about that is that they do not learn. Learning is something, is, is something, um, it, it, it's like something negative. They right. study. So yeah. they do not ask questions. Correct. The guy comes up, you know, he shows you something. They do it a thousand times first and they don't ask any questions. 
only when they know what they're doing do they ask a question, <laughs> right? And I, I love that philosophy. I've picked it up in many ways, even right now, you know, it's something I say, you know, study, practice first, study second, and then teach. If you can teach it, you've understood it, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. so that's the way, practice, study, teach. And not like university where you make it first a study, and probably never a practice, <laughs> then you're already teaching people things you've studied. And you can feel the difference of somebody who's coming from practical skills. Mm -hmm. And that's where Mr. Movie comes in again. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, I noticed that with my Korean master too. He would never let me talk. He just said, just be quiet, watch what I do and do what I say. Now, okay. <laughs> Yes. Very much that philosophy too. Yes, yes. But it's not actually do what I say. You know, it's learn yourself. Mm. It's learn yeah. yourself. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, yeah. So, so the, many, the many of those mindsets that really blew my mind, which I've adapted. And the last one I would like to share is mind your own business. Mm -hmm. That was like a curse word. I mean, that was a curse. Oh, really? You know? Yeah, somebody said, mind your own business. You know, it was like, you know, I also grew up in, in the Caribbean, in, in Jamaica. Oh, yeah. So if somebody said, mind your own business, you know, it means you go to hell or, you know, get away oh. from here, mind your own business. Okay. Just like you have child minders, mm. mind your own business. Ah, oh, is that powerful? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Mind your own business. Yeah. I love that. One of the things that, um, that you said that I, I thought was really in, interesting is that um, the way that you learned, the way that they, your masters taught was watch so that you can learn for yourself. You know, not don't do what I do, uh, look past what I'm doing to the principle so that you can see like, what is it? What is this for you? What is it about, you know, what we're doing that is truer than just the things that we're doing. Yes. So that's what I want to kind of talk about when we're talking about uh, marketing and getting people's attention. Um, what I've found is I, I, there are a lot of people who show you how to do something and it's a great idea, but you say, that's not for me, or you try to make yourself do it. And it just feels overwhelming because it's just, it's just not something that comes easy to you. It's hard to understand. And what I've, what I've started to come to the, the realization of is that I, I, I learn best by surveying a lot of different things, and then I have to create my own thing. And so that's what I, I really wanted to help people with is um, if you're copying somebody else's marketing style, it's, um, it will take you as far as you've learned their process. And if you're not the type of person that they are, if you don't have the personality or the temperament, um, you know, you'll, you'll run up against limitations. And what, <clears throat> what I think is really powerful is like, when you, like you just said, learn yourself, understand you. It's like, if you know who you are and you model your business after the person that you are, then it starts being fun. It starts being easy. It starts being repeatable. So that's kind of what I want to, I want to talk about and dig into with you guys. So Cassandra has mentioned, uh, before you jumped in, Mr. Move it, she was saying, um, I don't need to be flashy. I don't need to make a, you know, eight figure business and just hustle all the time, travel around the world. It's like, I want to have steady income, be able to take vacations if I feel like it. Um, and I want to be helping other parents, you know, single moms, uh, parents who work in corporate, who have kids, who have teens, and that's where she wants to make a difference. Yes. And, and Cassandra, you know, if I was there, I'd have said to you, make the eight figures or the nine figures and give me the difference. I've got use <laughs> for your money. You know, you don't have to keep it. Right, <laughs> you know, right, right. If you've got the potential to make eight figures and nine figures and you're only making six figures. That's a that's a bad deal. Because some people will never be able to make six figures in their whole lives. They don't have that gift. So those who have got the gift, it doesn't mean make it and say, mine, 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 mine. I have use for your money. I mean, there's a lot of things we could do with your money. 
you know. So, so yeah. that's my mindset. That's my money mindset. Mm -hmm. And as Cassandra also said, I also help women. That's my my target market. Working women. Mm -hmm. They called mm -hmm. me Mr. Move It, and um, uh, self empowerment, mm -hmm. and that's where motivation comes mm -hmm. from. Motivation is mine because it's what I have discovered. Masara, mm. Mr. Move It, Motivation. Cassandra, Cassandra Tivation. Aaron, Aaron Tivation. It's what makes you tick. It's what mm. makes you wake up in the morning. It's what makes you turn on your sun. Mm. Not your light, your sun, your sun. You know, illuminate universes. Mm. And everybody can do it. See, everybody has got the same gifts. Nobody has got better gifts. As you just have to use them. You know, so that's where, for me, the miracle yeah. comes in, is your willingness to step into your power, which absolutely. is already there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. I, I, I love that. Uh, Masara, one of the things that you said that I resonate with is when you find, uh, when you find the thing that moves you, that motivates you, it allows you to shine. It allows you to, you know, to turn on your sun that illuminates things for other people. And I think that's, that is so key because every person and individual is unique from their experience, their thoughts and their feelings are never going to come in that combination with anybody else again. And what you've learned from your experience, your perspective is unique to you. And that thing is something that if you find a way to share that over and over in a way that's valuable for people, that's what changes the world is when we share our stories when we share our perspective, when we share our experience, because often the way that we connect to each other and learn from each other is not through, okay, go do this task. We have to connect it to something and we're very emotional. So we, we learn through stories. We remember things through stories. And so that's, that's the big thing that I want to unpack today is like, let's find some stories that connect with the kind of people you're trying to help. So Cassandra, you said you're trying to help parents. Correct. All right. Now you also mentioned that you do all sorts of things. You, you're an acupuncturist, you have a medical background, you're a coach, martial artist, you know things about mindset. Um, and I took a look at your website and what I am unclear on is what is it that is most important to you? That's, that's what we really want to dig into. So I think what I'm realizing from the last couple of meetings I've been to and talking about this, it's where I came from <clears throat> that's hard to tell people why I'm motivated to do this. So I just had, there's so much shame around it that I haven't gotten comfortable talking about it. And I think that's the piece. So I think for me, it's about saying it doesn't matter, you know, it matters because you have to be aware of how what happened in the past has shaped you and why you, mm -hmm. I've chosen what I've chosen is because but not get into the past. Do you know what I mean? It's like, how do you say, okay, it was tough, but people are going to go, why is it tough? Well, there's a lot of shame. There was violence. There was you know, torture, <laughs> there was, you know, we were like, we were considered property, not people. So I think because of that mindset, that's where all my works, why I feel strongly to intervene. You can still be a mom, you can still have kids, you can still make a difference, but how do you, you know, you can hear me, it's very emotional <laughs> to say, these were huge steps. Mm. And I just want parents who've been through that to know you can really enjoy life and let people in. And that takes mind, body, and, and spirit all together. You have to work on all levels at all times, but not constantly. But building yourself up, letting, pe letting the walls down, letting people in. So I'm sorry. But I just have to talk about this so I get through it. <laughs> so mm. I have passion for what I do because I know it works. Mm. It's messy. It's vulnerability. It builds courage. It builds strength. 
and you will see yourself um, just grow in a way you never thought possible. So, mm. does that make sense? You've known me a lot longer. Yeah. Do you know what well, I'm saying? Yeah, I do. So I, I just want to thank you for being uh, being brave enough to be a little bit vulnerable with us. What what you said was very important. I think creating and modeling for the people that you're trying to help is you need to be able to share there's pain without feeling that you have to get into every detail. Right. I, I think for people who have been there, like, it takes a lot of work. It takes oh. so much work to, to get to the place where those things aren't still haunting you and causing <laughs> you like continuing to pull you back into that, um, that part of yourself. There's a lot of processing that needs to happen. And most people have not been given the tools. I mean, my, my story, I grew up in a conservative Christian environment. And so when I started looking at porn, when I was like 12, I couldn't tell anybody about it. I felt embarrassed. I felt trapped. And, and the people that I did trust to ask for help, you know, I talked to my parents, I talked to pastors, I talked to therapists, talked to friends and adults that I thought could help be accountability partners for me or give me advice. None of them knew how to help me. None of them really were that interested in delving and going through the process with me. They're just like, oh, you know, I, I feel bad for you for that. And then they really didn't have any tools. They didn't know it. Okay. And, and so it was something that for a lot of that experience, I felt like, well, I really can't tell anybody because nobody really wants to go through my shit, you know? Nobody wants to hear my pain. And that, that was the story I was telling myself. And, and so to be able to find ways that you can say, here are the things that you might be going through that are really hard, that are very painful, and give a voice to what those people might be experiencing. But you sharing, like, you don't necessarily have to be at the place where you have to share that. And in fact... Um, that may be a part of the way you support people is creating very private and safe spaces where if they need to unload, if they need to unpack those things, they can do it in a very intimate space where they don't feel like they have, you know, uh, other people watching and judging. It's, it's really important to feel like there's <clears throat> a very neutral and safe space for people to process those sorts of things. Um, I do... I do want to have you explore, like, what are some ways that you can, that you can talk about what does that look like? Maybe from a third person perspective, what, what does that feel like um, that in terms of the, the people that you're trying to help that you feel most passionate about supporting because you understand their experience? Mm -hmm. What are some of those um, markers or triggers or pain points that somebody might say, oh man, like that's me. I, maybe Cassandra is somebody I can trust to talk about privately with it, about this. Um, and it's something where, you know, if you're not ready to share all the details of your story, you don't need to do that, but you need to, okay. you need to help people realize, oh, this is what we're talking about. This is the pain, you know, can you find examples of people who have gotten to that place that are, mm -hmm. I guess I would say their success stories in the sense that they feel freed by the journey they've completed mm -hmm. the processing. They they're able to share that story. And you say, you know, look at these, look at these examples of this person went through this very difficult thing and now they're out there helping people. That's what I want to create for you. I've been in that place myself. I have a lot of pain in my backstory and I understand where you are at. You know, you can use case studies from other people that are notable who have gone through, um, mm -hmm. you know, one, one that comes to <laughs> mind is um, the, I'm trying to remember the, uh, the name, um, the, the woman who is the little girl in the, the picture from the Vietnam War, the, the little girl that was like running, who'd been napalm. She's totally naked. She's like six or seven. 
very, very famous image. Oh, I don't um, know that one. She's, she, was, uh, she was kind of the poster child for like the, the pain and suffering of the, the, the war. war. Okay. And um, she, she grew up to be a motivational speaker. Um, the pastor of mine that, that I worked with, um, he's on a show now that they interviewed her and she talks about having gone through that experience, having gone through the, the, the horrors of war and having, um, having been in that struggle. Hmm. Um, but some people like that who have gone through and are willing to talk about those things, start, start painting a picture where it's like, um, you're, you're not necessarily, um, you don't have to, you don't have to say this is your exact problem, but maybe if you can draw some boundaries of like, here's one example, here's another example, and here's another example. You know, if you fall somewhere in, in this window, mm -hmm. I understand that. And, you know, if you get to know me and we speak privately, you'll, you'll understand that I understand where you're at. Um, that, that would be what I would suggest is mm -hmm. what, what are, do you know any movies or stories that you particularly resonate with that maybe deal with um, on an emotional level, some of these things? Yeah, or there is one movie I can think. It's an old time movie. Um, it's from the 50s. Um, tell me, tell me about it. Tell me the, tell me the story. I don't remember. I don't remember the name of it. It has to do with an actress and raising her daughter, but like things like, um, being harsh in your correction and you can mm -hmm. see the wound in the child's eyes and you're like, Oh my God, I didn't, you know, I'm hurting more than harm. Mm -hmm. Um, and knowing that your husband doesn't see you and you love him, but you can't reach him at all. So he gaslights you all the time. He doesn't have time for you. He doesn't have kindness in his heart for you. Um, you do everything you can. And the one time you make a decision for yourself, you're not spoken to for three or four months, you know, these kinds of things. And you think, what am I doing? But I don't know what else to do. Cause in my family, you don't leave your spouse. Mm -hmm. You just take the punches, you take whatever, mm -hmm. physical, mental, emotional. So, um, wanting out, but not even knowing how to ask for help or all the shame that comes with it. So mm -hmm. um, just not even feeling good about being a mom, you know, like, wow, my kids are seeing me be treated like this. Are they going to mm -hmm. treat their spouse like that? Um, you know, having to ask for money, but I'm working full time, but never, you know, years later realizing I never knew what the checkbook was. I never knew mm -hmm. where the account was kept. I didn't know where we banked. I didn't, and I never thought to ask. I had a degree, but I was mm -hmm. just like, you know, cause that's how I was raised. So mm -hmm. um, it took a lot of strength to walk away and just say, I'm done. And you know, the shunning of the whole family and standing there alone, naked. And all I have is therapists. Mm. Who the hell are these people? Should I trust them? Should I not? You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> and the things they're telling me make me want to just lose my cookies you know because <laughs> mm. it's like don't shower me with love because i don't i've never gotten that in home so i don't know what to do with it i think you're lying to me <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know so you're really screwed up <laughs> does that make sense yeah so okay. what i'm hearing you say is um part of the experience is the the lack of the ability to uh, or or maybe not the lack of ability, but just no reference for how to trust and who to trust. Right. That's <laughs> correct. So what, what I'm hearing right away is that the kind of person you're talking about, you need to create three things in your story. You need to help them first before you do anything else. You need to help them feel safe. That if you don't make them feel safe, they're going to run away. They will never have any further relationship with you. So that, that's the number one thing. So you need to, what you started with at the beginning, is like, sometimes you can't even talk about your story. It's, you're just not even ready to do that. We're not going to make you share that. You know, you're not going to have to raise your hands. Like there are private ways to get in touch with me that you need to, you need to create that safe space for people so that if they do recognize that they they have the problem that you can help them solve 
that there's a safe way that they can ask for help. They're, okay. It's not going to come with judgment. It's going to be a, uh, private. It's, it's going to be something where you understand what they're going through. And then the next thing you need to create is care. So in the process of connection. So when they reach out to you, when you initiate conversation, when they come into your community, how can you demonstrate that my number one priority for you is care? Now, that might mean that we work together if that's what you want. It might just mean having somebody that you can say, hey, this happened to me. I just needed somebody else that has been there that can understand so I can get it off my chest. You let them know when you connect with me, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to care for you because I understand where you're at. That doesn't mean that we have to, you know, I'm going to chase you down and try to make you into a client. Uh, my job is to support you and the people that I work with and the community that I own, like that's the job is we're here to care for each other. I'm here to care for you. Okay. And then you need to create freedom. So how have you learned to turn that circumstance, that history that you've had, what are the things that you know that can help them feel better than where they're at? And how do you, when, when somebody comes into your world, you give them the option to participate at the level that they feel safe. They can ask for the amount of care that they want without being obligated whatsoever to have any further relationship if they don't want to. You need to make it clear for these people that this is entirely your choice. My, my ability to show up is gonna depend on what you want from me. So I'm, you just become a reflection for what they are asking for, what they're saying. And then if they don't initiate, you don't go any further. It's very important that they, they feel safe and that any connection, they experience care and it always comes with freedom. There's always a, a door that they have clear, uh, clear line of sight to so that if it feels like, you know what, maybe this isn't the right thing for me. They don't feel trapped. They don't feel, because uh, mm -hmm. the last thing you want is for people who are <clears throat> hurting and who are afraid for that type of person to perceive you as somebody who's just trying to get something out of them, mm -hmm. uh, like that community who is connected with other people, like they talk that your reputation uh, will, will be make, made or broken on how well they experience you in this. Okay. So what I, what I really think we should do is pick apart the pieces that you feel comfortable talking about your story and maybe start to organize those okay. pieces and then figure out um, how can you tie that all together? Because if you, if you can have one story, mm -hmm. one story, which is it attracts the kind of person that you're, you're looking to help, they feel like you understand them. If they feel understood, if they feel seen, they're going to want to engage. They'll, they'll start to reach out to connect because they, they expect from what you've told them in, this, in, in your story, they expect that if I reach out, maybe I'll receive some care. Uh, if, if, they're, if they're reaching out because um, you're saying, hey, I can, you know, I can fix your problems, I can... Um, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're promising, like for somebody who has uh, a low threshold of trust for the world, you have to, you have to show up in a, in a more powerful way. And this is one of those things where I would say, <clears throat> lean as much as you can on what parts of your story have you earned? What parts of your story do you feel comfortable that maybe they're not in that place? and you can model for them, I'm in this journey with you, but like I'm able to talk about this and this and this aspect of my experience because 
I had the right tools. I had the right people. I had the right support. I had the right care. Okay. And, you know, acknowledging there are some parts that you just, you don't need to necessarily share with everybody. You don't even need to share with, with me, but you need to be honest and, and look at those things um, for yourself. You need to be able to find the way back to accepting and loving the part of you that went through those experiences. And if you need the tools, if you need that, if you need some expertise from somebody who has been there, who understands, you know, here's a way that you can find out more about how I do that. Here's, here's some resources that you can look at on your own, you know, that allow you to see into how how I help people, why this is important to me. Okay. I have my book. I authored a book. So that- Mm, Tell me about your book. So it's on Amazon. I wrote it in 2016. I released it. And then I went to Montana because I just needed, I didn't know how it would go. And it was about raising my daughter after I had, you know, from the time I had her. So Mm -hmm. people would see the experience of, oh my God, I have a daughter. I had two sons it didn't trigger me. The daughter triggered me. So I wrote about that experience and she went to college and I went off to Montana to, to do deeper work with, with some of the shaman out there and things like that. So, um, yeah, so it really talks about holding her and going, Oh my God, how am I going to teach her when I really all of a sudden realize I don't have a good control about or a good understanding of who I am as a person. Um, and I didn't want her to take on my stuff. So it really, how did I want to tell her about, you know, it talks about the ritual I created for when she had her initiation for her menses and what we talked about. And I took three days um, Mm -hmm. to spend time with her. And um, each day we did a celebration. The first day was a box of things that had been saving till that day. Um, uh, The second day was, was um, going out to lunch and the next the last day was buying her an outfit and then just having her talk about you know how she's dealing with you know I don't know about going to school and I'm worried about this this and this and giving her time you know Mm -hmm. and then you know saying like okay so from this time on we're talking I have six years now before you're out that door so every day we're going to talk about boy stuff and she went, what? You know, like we're going to talk about all that stuff. And so, and how I took her to a uh, a sex shop at 18 before she left for college. And we did the tour of the sex shop and set her up with a um, somebody in the store who did the sex education to aunt. So she would go by herself so she could get all her questions answered before she went off to college. So she was knowledgeable and I wanted her to have everything she needed before she went off so she wouldn't be caught compromised in with mm-hmm. a boy or something mm-hmm. or a girl, you know. So um, that was important to me, but she knew more than I did. I said, how do you know all this stuff? And she said, mom, I've been on the internet, you know? And I'm like, oh, that's all I'm there. I don't go looking for stuff like that. So it was one of those bonding times that was really precious. So just mm-hmm. talking about, you know, how, what we were going through, how this was as a mom and mm-hmm. sharing stories that I've collected from different healers about the different aspects of being a woman, being a man, what do you need to be aware of, you know, be true to yourself as best you can. When things happen, I'm here, you know, I don't have all the answers, but you can come here and talk. Mm-hmm. So that was basically it which led at the time her dad and I were divorced, which I think was really cool. Her dad then went with her to the shop (laughs) and they explored it together as father, daughter. And then the comment she came home was, oh my God, he bought stuff there. (laughs) That was like, and he's married and, you know, that's normal, you know, but it was like funny for her. You know, like I was so embarrassed. I'm like, ah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Normalized it, you know. Mm. So um trying to do the healing, you know, as much as we could. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So what I love about that story right there is you don't talk about any trauma, you don't talk about any pain, but what you do show is look, I'm trying to create safety for my kid. I'm educating my child about look, this is. This is a, a, a part of the world you can't escape. This is part of who we are. 
This is part of our biology. This is part of the way that other people relate to other people. And you need to know how some people talk about it. Here's, some, here's somebody that I'm introducing you to that I'm saying is an okay person to talk to, to learn things from. You created freedom by, by saying, you can come here back, back here by yourself if you need to find out more things that you don't wanna talk with me about. Um, she experienced that, that time and space in her life when she needed support with care because you created brand new uh, traditions with her. You created new, uh, it wasn't just you giving her information. Is you also spending time with her, trying to show her that I'm, I'm loving you by sharing what I know in this moment because it's going to help. And so even though you're not talking about some of the things that somebody may still not have processed and that may be a hang up, what you really want, I mean, what, what these parents want is I don't want my kid to go through the world and the experience that I went through. And part of how I'm raising my kid is like, how do I, how do I help them? How do I uh, create protection around them without suffocating them? And that's what you need to show people is it's possible to have had a history where I didn't get what I needed. I was missing the things that would, that were going to keep me safe, that helped me feel cared for. And that gave me freedom. I had to do a lot of that work and create that for myself. And I'm still in that process. We don't want that for our kids. What, what we need to do is model these things for, for our children. And you can do that in everyday life. Um, you can allude to the fact that that's, uh, it's motivated by a place of pain, but the, the real freedom is like, what does it look like when, when you're showing up as the parent that you never had, when you are showing up as the person that you wish other people had been for you. And that's, that's what those parents really want. People who've had difficult, painful, un unescapable scenarios that they, that they are still processing. It's like, how do I make sure my kid never goes through that? Well, the reality is you, you don't know what's going to happen to them. You have to prepare them and give them everything that you can. And whether, whether you're going to share part of your history with your child or whether that just shapes how you interact with your child, you need to, mm -hmm. you need to think about like, how do I create this this model for my kid. Okay. So that's, that's what I, <clears throat> that's what I see is I think. This is what I'm trying to do with doing the parents with, with mm -hmm. the acupuncture and stuff. Cause it's, there's cranial sacral. There's just, it's just different ways of connecting. How do you, how do you show a parent you can use touch in a safe way that can mm -hmm. be bonding as well as relaxing, mm -hmm. but you also teach respect because you give the child permission to say no. And, um, but you also teach when they're ready. So they have say, they learn their boundaries. It's more open. So, mm. yeah, I think this is, I like what you're sharing here. This is much easier for me to create now. Yeah. I do appreciate it. I can use many different stories throughout raising both my sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. I mean, we used to go on Sundays. I'd take the whole family when I was married with Sage's dad. Uh -huh. And we go to my office and everybody would get a massage after church. And then they all had to work on mom. So <laughs> the baby took, you know, my head and then the boys took my <laughs> arms and, and legs. And then my mm. husband would do my back, you know? So it was just one of those things we just did. But I, the mm. whole thing was I'll do all of you, but everybody's got to help mom too. Mm. Everybody's got to give me, you know, and it was kind of chaotic, mm -hmm. but it still was just joyful for me because yeah. We had family, you know, we had a bonding that nobody mm -hmm. else would have. So, yeah, mm. those are funny stories. See, and, and that, I think that's a great example of, of this. It's like, okay, so when you've established boundaries, when you show your kids, what's a healthy way to respect somebody else's body? You know, how do you say, when is it okay to touch somebody? When is it okay for somebody to spend time with you in a close way. And it's like, if you model that in your family in a healthy way, that gives them an idea of 
you know, okay, what am I measuring the world against? It's like, this is okay in this context in our home. When it starts to deviate from that, then I start asking questions. If you don't have any kind of practice, if you don't have any sort of experience where you're explaining to your kid, this is why we're doing this. It's okay when mom and dad, you know, give you a back rub. If, you know, if somebody tries to do that to you, they need to ask you, you know, if, if, uh, if they're getting close to you, it's like, if you don't feel comfortable, you need to say, I don't want you to touch me. You know, you need to, you need to have those, um, have those things which are important to you. And when they tie in with your message and you just, you tie them back into this, you help, you help the people because what they're thinking, what they're wanting is how do I, how do I create the world that I didn't get to experience for the people who are coming after me, for my kids, for my family, for their friends, for the, the people that they know and the kids that they raise. And so you want to demonstrate for the people that will be asking for help. It's like, what could that look like? And how do I do that? How do I begin to start? Yeah. And you do that shoot through sharing stories of how you've explored doing that, how people in your community have done it, that you say, this is a great example. This is a great yeah. example of how to care for your kids and still keep them safe, how to let them go try, you know, try something fun with their friends that they've never done before. And you, you give them freedom and you trust them. You model the trust that you didn't get when you were a kid. Yeah. You need to, you know, open those things up. So, so what I would recommend is um, talking about your why of, you know, I have things that I don't want to talk about and I, I don't need to talk about, but I, I understand what it's like to go through pain. I've, I've been divorced. I've had, you know, I've had um, experiences where I don't trust people and it takes a lot of work. I understand the pain of that. So what is, what did I learn from that is I don't want my kids to experience what I experienced, but it's, it's very easy to swing too far the other way where you protect your kids from everything and they, and they don't know anything. And so then when they finally get on their own, it's like they're, they have no idea what to watch out for, who might take advantage of them. You know, you want to, you want to say, how, how can you create, uh, how can you create resilient kids who have learned what they need to learn before they have to take care of themselves and the way that you do that is you, you show your kids, what does it look like to be safe? If you're the most safe person that they have in their life, they're going to come to you when they need care for things that like, Hey mom, this hurt. Uh, you know, this person broke my heart. I, you know, I'm in this, you know, weird situation at work. What should I do? If they feel safe with you, they're going to come to you when they need a little bit of care. If, if they experience care every time that they connect with you, they're going to, they're going to feel comfortable, but you have to, you have to always give that care with a higher degree of freedom. Like they have to know that it's okay for them to say, you know what, I'm done. I don't, you know, you have to, one of the things I'll share a personal story for me is like one of the major ways that my folks interacted with me when they were teaching us things is often it happened as a result of uh, discipline and I would get a lecture. I didn't feel a lot of freedom in teaching. I felt, um, I felt like I was wrong and I was not able to live up to the expectations that were, it's like, this is what the right thing to do is. This is the, what a good kid would do. And here's all the reasons you didn't do it. You know, here's, yeah. here's what I wanna see instead. Mm -hmm. um, there was, you know, as a child, you only see the parts that are most obvious and prominent. So all of the stuff that happened that did create safety, that did create freedom. It's like most of that went over my head because what I was experiencing was the part that I didn't like, Yeah. but that's the part that stuck with me. That's the part that I remember was, um, all of the ways that I just felt bad about, about myself and felt bad about disappointing my parents. And because that was the only tool 
that they used primarily to, you know, instruct or educate me or help me learn something new about, you know, at, you know, as, as you grow up and you become more and more responsible for things. Um, I, I struggled a lot. I, a lot of my life, I, I was constantly driven to do more and to, and I always felt like a failure because I was always playing that, that story back of like, well, I know here are a bunch of options I could have done. I only did this and it didn't turn out the way I wanted it. So then now I feel bad about it. I, I didn't spend any energy looking at, well, but you went ahead and did something. You created something. Just the fact that you did something you didn't need to, you should be proud of that. Like I, I didn't have those kinds of conversations yeah. with myself Absolutely. most of the time. Yeah. Yep. So when you share your stories, it brings out stories from other people. The right kind of story, the right kind of message will help people feel safe. It's going to help them feel cared for. And it's going to experience, they're going to experience the freedom to share. Now they may just reshare your story and say, oh my goodness, I heard Cassandra share this, 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 and this, and it resonated with me so deeply. That might be as, as safe as they feel to share. Or it may prompt, you know, you know what, you said something. I, I felt that experience. Now I'm going to share my story and my experience and the pain that I went through because they feel that you understand. And those people who trust you enough, that's a, that's a huge hand raise in saying, I trust you. I trust you to be able to share my experience and to some, to whatever degree that they're sharing it publicly or on social media. It's like, you've created a space where they feel okay to share. Those are people you want to follow up with and say, Hey, I really, I really value. And I feel honored that you trusted me to share your story. You know, tell me a little bit about that. Like, what have you learned in that? Um, is there anything that I can do to support you? And I just want you to know, you know, this is a big passion of mine, helping people. If, if you don't feel like you're in a place where you, where you need help or you, you want help, I don't want you to feel like I'm, you know, you, you find, a, find a way to create some freedom for them. So they, yeah. they feel, feel safe. But the people who trust you enough, um, you always you know, this is something that I see, I see great teachers do is when somebody shares something that is identified as a problem that they can help solve, especially for like really heart centered people. Um, one of the best ways to invite somebody to a deeper conversation is instead of calling them out or directly messaging them, uh, you do a response without saying what it, who it's a response to, but you do a response to the general public. You directly address what that person's saying without calling them out, without saying it's for them, without, um, you know, and then you say, and if that's you, you know, if, if this is something that you identify with, that you experience and you would like some help, let me know. So you can, you can talk to the greater whole while addressing and meaning it for one person. Um, and it just gives them the opportunity where if they, if they feel like, you know, they're maybe on the edge of like, man, I'm, I really wish I had asked Cassandra about something, but now it feels like the moment's over. You do a video like that. You do a, res a short response and, you know, you know, I've been thinking, let me share a story about this. This might be the problem that you're experiencing. You directly address the thing that somebody has shared and, and trusted you with. And if that's you, you know, I, I have a lot of compassion for that. I want, I want you to help I want to help you have some courage in the space where you're in. And if you would like to talk privately um, and share where you're at and see if that's something I can help you with, here's how to reach out to me. Here's how to, here's how to do that. Um, <clears throat> that way people don't feel uh, kind of cornered and sort of like chased down. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's really easy when you've been through very painful experiences um, you, you start to see everything in the world as like a predator out to get you. It's like yeah. what, what, what this looks like, instead of you seeing a hug, it's like, it's the lion coming to eat the zebra, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so 
you know, when somebody's like, Hey, it's great to see you. You just think, why do they, you know, why are they coming near me? You know, what is it when, whenever my boss, you know, says, Hey, Aaron, let's talk, you know, instead of, you know, Hey, he just wants to connect. It's like, what did I do wrong? You know, yeah. that's, so, you know, that's what you yeah. want to do is you want to find as many ways as you can for your audience to create freedom, but let them know that you're, you're there to care for them with safety. And, and I, I really think um, just what you've shared with us today, talking about there's pain in my past and you don't need to share your entire story with no. everybody. That's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can process and understand what you've been through. No. Uh, but it is important for you to process those things. It's important for you to have tools and to have people you can, that understand where you've been, that you can trust. And if I can be that for you, you know, I'm, I'm willing, I'm, I'm available. And that's who I like to help. Um, okay. But I've experienced, you know, um, I've experienced being divorced, being a single mom, having to figure out how to create a world for my, my kids that uh, is better than the one I grew up in. And if you can, if you can share, find the way to craft that story where you're, where you're hitting that, it's like, this is the thing, <clears throat> this is the thing that we were, are moving away from the unsafe. Like I was there. That was me. Oops. I guess you can't see that. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's like, this was, this was where we've been. We want this. But more than yeah. that, for ourselves, we want that for our kids. We want that for the world that we're leaving behind. And I'm somebody who cares about that enough that I'm helping other people who've been there. I've, I've gone through some of that work and I'm trying to, in the capacity and the space that I have, I'm helping other people who, have, who, aren't, who are just a little bit further behind in that journey. So that's why I'm doing this. And if you want that, here's ways that you can work with me. Here's ways that you can... Um, get resources for me without having to talk to me. It's like, but you can read my book and find out if you like me and, you know, um, like what I have to offer. You can join my community. You can email me, tell me, tell me what you want to tell me about yourself. Um, but that's what I would do is, is craft a story where people feel safe with you because okay. they, they can see that you've been where they're at. Okay. And then, and then show them, why it's important, uh, why it's important to you so that they experience, if I reach out to you, I'm going to feel care and okay. let them know that if they do, they still, they always have the option. It's, uh, you know, you're not going to aggressively text them every day. And it's like, Hey, we have this great training. That's, you know, that's exactly for you. It's like, did you miss it? You know, there's a replay in our, it's like, you know, whatever you need to do for your market that creates uh, a sense of, mm -hmm. of freedom. It's like, I can, I can participate at the level that I feel comfortable. Great. Okay. That's going to be, this really helped tremendously. Mm. So it's like the ticket, like it makes so much sense because all the words you're using are like what I'm always concerned about when somebody comes or what I put out and I've mm -hmm. hesitated because how do I, I see all these parenting things and it's very intense and, like no it's not mm -hmm. where people like me could really mm -hmm. even they'll benefit but depending on their level of where they're at could very much trigger shame so yeah, yeah very much so well thank you mm -hmm. yeah so what you just said you kind of bookended our, <clears throat> our conversation you kind of opened with there's things that you don't want to talk about because of the shame and and if that's, if that's a big part of your message, then I wouldn't talk a lot about the mechanics of the way that you help people. It's like acupuncture, coaching, um, you know, mindset, martial arts, those sorts of things. All of those are tools that you have in your toolkit. What you really want to, what you really want to help people understand is if your story has been one of shame, I have been there. I, I still have parts of me that, that experience that. I understand that story. So I've, because of that, I've looked for a lot of ways to help myself. And I've, I've looked for a lot of tools. I have access to a lot of different things besides the traditional therapy. You know, I sat down with therapists. I didn't trust them. I didn't, I didn't understand that there were people that you could trust. 
So I was constantly second guessing therapists. That wasn't the thing that worked for me. It's like you, you share, again, you share your story of like, I was told this is the way you get help. When you have pain, like you go to therapy and not everybody can take advantage of that way of being helped. I mean, that was my story. When I talked to therapists about porn, it was either like, oh, that's totally normal. You know, they dismissed what my values were. It was like, well, I've got this behavior that I don't like, and I want to, I want to align my behavior with the values that I have. And so then they would just completely ignore the person that I wanted to be, say, don't worry about it. Or they would, or be, you know, they would, um, Anyway, we don't need to talk about my story, but it's like, I identify the same way that what you said is like, I, I went to this because that was the first thing on the list of like, here's how you get help. And so I went there expecting, well, maybe this professional can help me. And it turns out that wasn't the right thing for me. I understand that. Like, that's something you should share. Okay. Thanks. Mm. Did you record this? Um, yeah, it's, um, I'll, I'll send, I can send you a recording, but yeah, the, the, the stream is, is there in the group and you're, you're welcome to rewatch it. If you want me to send you a recording of just our, our time, yeah. I, I can try and do that. If you have time, that'd be great. All righty. Thank you. So Cassandra, has this been, has this been helpful? Does that give you some idea of like where to start with oh, very much so. the story? a whole is plethora it... of stuff that I can build off of what you're mm -hmm. saying and yeah. just use those you know, prefaces. So if I can do like, get six of those <clears throat> written out, that'll push my, push me in the direction. That'll be uh, where I'm standing confident when I'm talking. Yeah. I, I, I just, when I'm networking, I love being there, but when I have to stand up, no matter what I've said, it doesn't come out right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So this will yeah. be really helpful. This is the core message. So I'm going to, I'm going to just this is bringing something up for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to open my swipe file real quick. Um, but it feels to me like the thing to tie this all together is what you're really, you're moving people from. So if you're helping parents, you're moving them from shame to acceptance. And so the, the journey is, so this is, this is in some part where they're living right now. Mm -hmm. It's like, they feel a lot of shame. What you want to move them to is tell them, I can show you how to get to this place. You don't have to accept the story that you, you know, you don't have any control over it. You don't even have to accept the person that you are right now. If you, if you're somebody who it's like, I see a better version of myself that I want to be, you don't have to um, go through the, whatever it is, like, just start focusing on the person you want to be. And, but what you do need to accept is like, you are the right person for the job that you are given of being your parent's kid and being your kid's parent. That's the part that you need to say, like, this doesn't matter. That actually gives you the tools. That gives you the experience that you don't want your kid to have. You, you have the ability to help them without suffocating them, without uh, making them so naive about the world that they're at risk again. It's like, you're the perfect person for the job. If this is what they're feeling, what your story needs to do is by showing them how you have been able to accept yourself and let them know that this is the freedom they're moving towards, that they can accept on some level that they don't have to feel shame about who they are or what has happened. They, they are exactly in the right place in the right time for the right person, you know, to help care yeah, for their, kid. their kids and the world that they're leaving behind. So that's, that's the crux of the story that you need to tell. And I would focus on just doing one story, tell one story that you always introduce yourself with when people say, so Cassandra, what do you do? Well, my heart is really for helping parents, especially, you know, parents who have teens who are in that transitioning phase because, you know, I came from a place that wasn't safe. I didn't experience the care that I needed. And I want my kids to be free. I don't want them to have 
I don't want them to have the experience that I had. So, you know, I had to process a lot of pain. I went through being a single mom after I got divorced and I felt bad about who I was. So I, I had a, I looked for a whole bunch of different tools because people, you know, when I went to therapists for help, they, you know, it didn't work for me. That tool wasn't what I was looking for. And I, I just explored a bunch of different modalities. And now I have things that have helped me and I want to share those with other people that I feel like it can help so that more people can experience the acceptance that I finally have, have realized, like my boys, my daughter, like, I'm so grateful I get to be their mom and I'm, I'm happy that they got to have me as a mom. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been the person that I am. if I hadn't gone through this. I wouldn't have gone through the trouble of finding all these extra things and working on myself to this degree to get to the place where I am. Doesn't mean it's the story I wanted. Doesn't mean that anybody else should have to go through it, but I am, I am glad to be in the place where I am now, where I can help them, where I can help you. If that's something you want, here's how you can, here's how you can uh, work with me. Find a way to tell that as a story. Got it. And people will start, people will start asking for help. Okay, perfect. I appreciate that. That's wonderful. I'm going to write all of it. I'm going to type it out when I hear it one more time. So I'm just trying to not miss anything. Listening. Mm. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, how, I mean, how does that help you feel in terms of like, because I know when we talked before you said, yeah, I, I just feel like I, I have so many different things. I'm not sure what to lead with to help people know how I can help them. This and is really, this is really good. This is, this is like, I don't need anything else. This really, you, you heard me, you captured it. I'm very excited to be going forward. And I have no, that, that, that's feeling you get in your gut. That's not quite right. This is quite right. This is it. This is what I needed. So I, from the bottom of my heart, am so grateful I came on today and spoke with you earlier this week. This was wonderful. And this will just bloom the way it's supposed to. I'm not even worrying about where it goes from this point. That story was a piece I couldn't put together because I was too much in my way, worried about triggering people, worrying about, you know, like, huh, what do they really need to hear? What not to hear? So, yeah, so thank you. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad it's helpful. Helpful, um, Masara. I I would yes. love to get feedback from the room. It's like, how have you experienced Cassandra? What were some of the Absolutely. things that come up with you as you? As um, you I made share? I made lots of notes. You know, so I was studying the whole thing for myself. You triggered a lot of stories, my own stories, and um, also how I I decided when I got married, that I was going to be an excellent father to my children. Mm. That, was, that was my goal. And I asked myself back in the day, how will I know that I'm an excellent father? Mm. I will only know when my kids come to me, to talk to me, to spend time with me, to share whatever they have to do. That's the only way I will know. Nothing else counts. And so I have three adult children right now, you know? So... 28, 26, and 24. And they all come to me. They're all three different people. And there are many things, many things I did right. The things I didn't do right, I don't know about them because they haven't told me. <laughs> right? <laughs> but be sure, be sure that there were lots of mistakes. And that's just spending time. Spending time with your kids is usually like enough. You know, I believe that the children come through us but they don't belong to us they're their own people i agree so we have the opportunity you know and we have the privilege to be part of that life yeah so you might make a mistake something that didn't fit but because you were there that's the only thing that's the only thing for me that really counts so that's how i i, I raise my kids by asking i've never told my kids what to do Right. So I came with that martial martial arts thing from day one. And I've always made strong suggestions. I'm not telling you what to do. It's just a suggestion as a parent. So that worked, that worked out really, 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 really well for me. You know, so so there are many situations where 
my kids contacted me as the first person. You know, they didn't tell their friends, they didn't tell anybody, they didn't tell the police, they didn't tell, they, they came to me. <laughs> and I could, I could have hidden under a table. I'm telling you, if I wasn't the dad, I'd have gone like under the table and, and take myself away. But I said, now you're dad. Here we go. Solve it. Help them solve it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so that worked out extremely well. And this is, <clears throat> this is something that I like to share with people that the only right thing I believe that we can do as parents is to be there. To be there. You might ask the right questions. You might ask the wrong questions. You know, I said to my daughter once, oh, can I play this song for you? You know, and it was salt and pepper. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. And I said, no, we know everything already. Thank you. <laughs> you know? So that's how I try to introduce that topic, you know, and they said, they know everything. As I said, so tell me, what do you know? Yeah. said, oh, yeah, we can teach you stuff, you know, and I say, oh, really, you know, and then you, you find out that they do know enough. And they, they tell you that they had sex education in school. And they, they open up and I said, perfect, the song just, you know, and if you need anything, call out, call out to me. Right. And yeah, Cassandra, one of the things that that comes up for me as Masara is talking is, I mean, like, I'm getting choked up as he's sharing his story. He's, he's saying, you know, when there was a situation that I, like, I would have been recoiled at if it was anybody else, you know, what you were, what you were saying, Masara, what I heard is that the situations that your kids came to you with, it's like, whoa, it's like, this is more than I bargained for, but you got to show up as dad and be the guy that they came to help for. You were the first person that they thought of to, to ask yes. for help. It's like, yes. As a, as a dad, you know, of I, my kids are one and three, you know, that's, that's what I want to be at. That's where I want to be right here. And when you share that story in the context of what Cassandra was just talking about, when you share, this is what freedom looks like. This is what having a healthy relationship with your kids and creating a safe world is like it's like the people who've had this experience you don't even have to draw a big circle around that you just say this is what you want this is what you want for your kids mm -hmm. yes that's why that's why i'm here to care for you this that's why i'm here to help you explore new tools that can help you process that can help you move past the shame and realize like you're exactly who your kids need you're exactly the person that's there for them and you need to and you need to be able to show up not as the person that you wish your parents had been for you, but as the person that your kid needs for them. Yes. And so many of us are caught in what do I wish I had? What do I, what did I not get? And you try to force everybody else around you into this model to give you what you needed instead of asking, well, what are my kids actually asking me for? What are my kids need right now? Who, who does dad need to be in this moment with the help that they're asking you for right now? You can't do that for your kid if you haven't started to acknowledge and deal with this. And, and so, you know, this, this, this little anecdote that Masara shared of like, yeah, like I, I tried to be a good parent and I knew that I had success when they started coming to me for help. That paints the picture and so you can even share, you know, I, I had a conversation with a gentleman who said his parents came, came to him when they needed help. That's what we want. That's what we want our kids to feel safe enough to come to us when they need, they need somebody to care for them. So that's, that's what you want to do is you want to set that stage with your story. This is why, this is why we're all in this boat, but this is, this is what we're looking for. This is what we're trying to get to. And I want to walk with you in that process. Uh, I want to be the person that maybe you can trust a little bit more because I've been there and, you know, that, I think that's, I think if you, if you share your story and you share what they want, like those people will come. Okay, cool. Yeah. And there's one small little story that I'd like, a very short one. Um, we had a situation and years later, 
my daughter came to me and I said, hey, well, thank you for telling me this years later, but why didn't you tell me this at the time? And then she said to me, I was scared. I said, scared of me? She says, no, I was scared for you. I said, why? She says, well, you're a martial artist, right? And I know you can get pretty upset. And you could have hurt this person so bad that the police come and get you and lock you up and you go to jail. And I don't have a father. So for me to have a father, I didn't tell you. I said, oh, yeah. oh. okay. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. Um, but I, I said, I actually did that too with my dad. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I went for my, I went and stayed overnight at a friend's at 15. And it was the first time I did in the new place we were. And that father came home and tried to rape the girlfriend that night that I was there with. And so he tried to attack me too, not realizing he was just drunk. Never told my dad because I knew my dad would have pulled a gun on him. And I didn't want him to go to jail. He's still, he's dead. He never heard the story. So, cause I was, you know, that's how daughters think. They know when they're loved and we don't want to trigger our dads. So we have to be careful. <laughs> right. Parents, yeah. Yeah. Then I said to her, I said to her, you know, I, I respect your decision and I'm honored that you're actually telling me the story a few years yeah. later. You know, I'm really happy about that. Um, no issues about that. But I said, remember, you still have the power. You could tell me the story. You could say, don't do anything. I will respect you. But I said, the knowledge is, in this case, I usually teach that knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. It only becomes power when you use it. Uh -huh. So I will have the power. I'll have the knowledge, but I won't use it. So I'm not, you know, but I have the knowledge. I said, for me, knowing is the first step without doing anything, right? I just need to know. And then you tell me, dad, I'm letting you know, but you don't do anything until I give you the green light. And I stick to it. I stick to it. And so this is how I, I developed that relationship mm -hmm. as well, you know, with- um, Let me turn no. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. It's Yes, yes. Yeah, that's powerful. I like that. Thanks for sharing that story. You're welcome. <clears throat> Cassandra, that story that you shared about the way that you um, you were meaning to protect your dad by not sharing that experience. Uh, I think that's a really powerful it's a really powerful story that you you can use to highlight as parents you know there's some things that we we don't want to find out we don't want to discover you know and and the way that we respond when those things come up trains our kids to to be it's like are they going to hide stuff because they're afraid of what we're going to do in the way that we show love for our kids, create boundaries and protect them. Are we helping them feel safe? Are we helping them feel like when they come to me with something big like that, are they going to experience care or are they going to feel like I'm taking their freedom away? You told me this thing, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go cause some chaos in the world. And you don't get a, you don't get a say because you're the kid. Mm -hmm. the kid still needs to have some some sense of freedom and you know that needs to be something that it, in every little decision in every interaction that you have with your kid you're training your kid you're teaching your kid what to expect they're going to project project what you're going to do so when something that is important uh comes up like this story that you shared it's like they're going to make a decision based on what they know about you as a parent. And if you're still stuck here, you know, if you're if you still feel bad about the things and you're constantly trying to fix the world because it's broken, if you're trying to fix the person that you are, you're trying to fix the situations that's ha happening with your kids, 
instead of accepting I'm the person who can support my kid no matter what, that if they, if they trust me with something, you know, and it, and it can be something as simple as like, um, you know, my three-year-old trying to pour herself some milk and spilling it all over the, the floor. You know, if I, if I get mad at her um, and say, you know, how could you do that? Why didn't you ask for help? It's like, she's three. That's, that's going to happen if she, if she does that, you know, in, instead of me going through the process of like, okay, Eden, we see you got milk all over the floor. You need to clean up the mess. So I need you to get, I'm going to help you get a rag. We need to wipe this all up and going through the process of her learning the consequence of making a mess is you got to clean it up. Instead, she's learning the consequence of me making a mess is now dad's mad. So I need to avoid making dad mad. So it's just, it's really important. Yeah. So Aaron, my thing that you're doing. Yeah, go ahead. Right. So Aaron, when, when your daughter spills the milk, I've, I've been there. I've been there three times. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I come up and I say, oh, we have a task here. Who's going to mm-hmm. do it? You or me? Or you half, me half? Or you mm-hmm. all of it this time and me all of it next time? So where's the mop? Where is this? Where is that? Mm-hmm. Yoo hoo! Let's have a party. Let's put some music on and get this and get this thing done. Because I we love could, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do too. Yeah, we do. We do a lot of we do a lot of games. Um, yeah, a lot of our a lot of our stuff is like Eden will help uh, <clears throat> clean up the kitchen after after breakfast, and Zoe's one. She just toddles around, you know, putting things in her mouth. So Eden just to kind of, to kind of keep them separate because they're very different developmentally right now. It's like three is a lot different than one. And so we try to keep them like have their own spaces. And so I usually try to get Eden to help me clean up after breakfast. So she'll like, she'll go out and she'll grab a plate and then try to put in the dishwasher. And then, you know, she has a little stool. She stands at the, at the sink and I help help her spray stuff off. And so it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's such a fun age to, to be at. Cool. Well, Masara, let's um let's transition and shift. Um, I I'm super I'm super grateful that we've gotten a chance to connect today because uh, we kind of see each other in passing and we haven't really yes. sat down on a face to face call. But um, yes. actually, I, actually, ahead. I like that. I like that because we developed the friendship without actually having. This is the first time we're on a call where we're actually having a conversation with each other. But I know you. Right. Yeah, I know you. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I've, 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 you know, I've been following you, watching you. Um, I know how your great your copy is and all this stuff. You know, there are many questions I have for you as well. You know, so so this is like going to be a never ending story. You know, but um, there are many parts of the business. There are many parts of things that I had to work out, I figured out. Yeah, and um, and there are many parts mm-hmm. that I believe we could brainstorm, <laughs> mastermind, yeah. and, uh, and discuss, you know, I differentiate those three, but you know, that's, yeah, so I'm really happy, and I'm open, I'm open, man, just yeah. let me know how you would like this to go, and let's let it flow. Uh, yeah, absolutely, I love that, so the question I have for you is, um, you know, in a, in a sentence or two, I know you talk about motivation and you know finding your thing that makes you excited everybody so yes. yeah <clears throat> so tell me a little bit about how do you like how do people first hear about this idea from you what it, how do you right. open the conversation right now i'm gonna flip i'm gonna flip this motivation is the result of an evolution for over 30 years. It evolved. Um, until the pandemic started, I didn't even know what an avatar was. I didn't never used that word before. Didn't even know what it was. And I've been self-employed. I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I've never done ads. Um, all my business has been done like this. And somebody asked me, who do you work with? You know, I said, that's easy. I work with women. And he said to me, so 
how you how do you know that you work with women? And I thought to myself, what a question. How, how do you know that you work with women? I said, well, in the last 30 years, 99% of the people who have worked with me have been women, right? And that's about half a million women and four men. So, so I believe I do work with women, right? So that's how I know. And he said, no, you didn't do a, you didn't do a survey. You don't know. And I said, a survey? He goes, yeah, have you asked the women what it is about you that, you know, that attracts, and I was going, okay, he must be the expert because I've paid uh, 10K for this coaching because I thought if you pay 10K, you're going to have a great coach, <laughs> right? So I thought, you know, that was me, you know, <laughs> boom. You know, if you're going to charge me 1K or $500, I wasn't going to pay you because I think you don't know anything. So I went for the 10K guy and that was my money gone, right? So, so for me, for me, uh, I, I've discovered that the pandemic brought me online. If it wasn't for the pandemic, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be here. I'd be having my old life where nobody asked me who is Mr. Move It, what do you do, and all this, none of these questions. And I was very well booked, very well booked. And each event I went to brought me new customers, right? And I've, I've had the opportunity to influence, I, I would say about 2 million school kids, right? And I come, my topic is only brush the teeth you want to keep. <laughs> kids love it. They love it. Yeah. They love it. And so now the stage where I'm at in my own business is I want to help. I want to help with, it's not actually I want to help. It's my duty. It's my duty and it's my life's purpose to inspire women to move forward in life in whatever way it is. So when we're talking spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, and all other things around that, all of those things. And there is something about me that I was born with that harmony, harmonates with women and helps them move the needle. I'm the kind of guy, you know, if you tell me you're gonna do something, then I'm gonna ask you, have you done it? I'm going to knock at your door until you tell me stop knocking at the door, <laughs> right? You said you're going to do it. And I love to work with heart-centered people. Now, the problem with that, it's really shocked me. It's really one of the biggest shocks I've ever had is that heart-centered people, when I try to guess, because I'm talking also of business now and not just the coaching part, not just the skill set of the, the coaching skill set, but I'm talking about the business skill set. I'm talking about you being a CEO of your business, you being a CFO of your business, you being a CMO of your business. And you realize that I've got so many great, great, great coaches. I'm telling you, so good. I think that I would think they're seven figure earners. And then they tell you they've made no money in the last three years, zero. And I say, what? But you're so skilled. And you see people have totally neglected the business mindsets, the business skill sets, and how to actually make an offer and ask for money. But they're great coaches, great coaches. You couldn't tell the difference. I'm telling you, I couldn't tell the difference between somebody who's making no money and somebody who's a seven-figure earner. Because the coaching itself was perfect but there's a skill set that's missing. And these are the women that I want to go for right now. People who have a proven offer, people who've got a solid process, people who are not making enough money. And if I find the people who are making the money, I would like to win them and say, you know, sometimes you need the meeting and sometimes the meeting needs you. So you still need to show up. So if somebody says to me, hey, I'm making a lot and I'm happy to say, well, would you like to share 
with those who don't, are not making anything. Join me. And if somebody says, I'm not making anything, I say, well, would you like to commit with conviction to yourself that this works? And then somebody say, yeah, but how can you help me? I said, well, I've been an entrepreneur for 32 years. I've made all my money myself. Everything, all the money I've made myself. I can show you a few things and then you can take this to the next level, right? So for me right now, that's my focus. I'm looking for heart-centered people because those who, those who just want to uh, take your money, unfortunately, they're a lot, right? Um, I say they're scammers, right? And then there's a second group of scammers. It's a, now it's a sweet word I'm using where my female entrepreneurs scam themselves, <laughs> right? I said, you just scammed yourself. You just gave coaching for 10 hours. And then you said, well, I'm, I'm doing it pro bono. And, you know, I didn't even know what pro bono meant. And, and then I had to figure, work that one out. And you've given so much value. People are getting great results. You're getting good testimonials. You're getting great case studies, but you're making no money. I said, no, 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 no. There is something going wrong. You need to work on your business mindsets, your business skill sets. Let me help you get started. So this is, these are actually the people that I'm looking for. I'm looking for capable, confident people who are not making any sales because maybe they just haven't got the skill set. They've never learned it. The money mindsets are totally wrong. And so, or just, just to help people, this is where I would like to go. And that's the direction that I'd like to grow. Mm. So, so that's what I want to have help the women create this flow mm -hmm. that creates cash flow. Cool. And like Cassandra that. said, you know, I don't want to, you know, that's how I joined with the six figures, seven figures. And I said, no, no, go ahead, make eight figures. I'll take the difference. <laughs> I'll take yeah. the difference and we will distribute that money so that it does its yeah. work, you know? Yeah. You know, so, 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 and to help people start thinking, well, if I've got the gifts to make all this money, Mm -hmm. And I don't need it. So why was I given this gift? Yeah, so that you can pay it forward. Correct. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. There are, many, there are many things that I don't need. There are many things that I don't need, but I still do them because I'm also there to help people move forward. Mm -hmm. and I love that. So, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's where I'm coming from. And a skill I learned in the last two years mm -hmm. is... Learning to listen with passion. And I caught myself listening in to Aaron speaking to Cassandra with passion. And I kept quiet. I didn't, I didn't jump in. I don't have that urge anymore. Like, you know, oh, tell your story now. I just make notes, put it down here. You know, if you get the opportunity, I can share. If not, doesn't matter. It's here. It's on paper. I've processed it. I've got better for myself as well, just by listening in. And I love this live thing, you know, because this is not a recording, you know, a recording I can watch even when you're dead, to be honest. But the live thing, I can only do this now, right? So this is why I love to also show up live. And this, these are things I have worked out because people were asking, oh, I'll watch the recording. I say, yeah, but you can watch the recording when I'm dead. <laughs> no, I'll watch it tonight. They say, no, you can watch it when I'm dead. You're not there. You got to be there. You got to be present. Show up five mm -hmm. minutes, 10 minutes, you know, commit. And then when you commit and when you show yeah. up, deal with what shows up. Don't just show up and sit there in the background. Be active, participate, yeah. take action, move it, you know? And so this, so this is, this is the way. That's the difference. Yeah. So, so Masara, what you're, what you're sharing is you like what, what I identified with a lot when you shared your story is that you, you went to work with somebody that they had their own process, they had their own model. It kind of mirrors a little bit like the, the therapist experience that I had. It's like, they have their own model. Like, this is how you need to get help. And I'm the expert. So listen to me. And they're kind of missing the point of what you're saying. So you're saying it's like, 
I've already demonstrated that who I work with is women. It's like, those are the people that constantly ask for help. And so that's like, that's who the person that I am is attractive to women who are asking me, can you help me with this? What wasn't clear to me was what do you do for these women who ask you for help? So it like my impression of you uh, in like, like you said, we haven't interacted, but we've gotten to know each other through social media and seeing each other in similar circles, like my impression of you, because you talk about moving is like you incorporate fitness and motivation in, in some ways, but I don't know really what it is that you do. Like when somebody says, I want to work with you and you help them find that thing that motivates them, what is it that they're actually paying you for? What's the outcome that you get people? Right. I help people fall madly in love with themselves. and then demonstrate that they're madly in love with themselves, with their deeds. I love that. <clears throat> I help people turn on their son. <laughs> because my son is turned on. I know how to do that. And we can turn up this intensity right at will at will and i help people understand that uh we have a discussion we discuss these things and they agree or disagree that's okay but it's just the discussion that's important for me like i did with my kids my three kids i've raised them really well and it's through just discussion not telling them what to do <laughs> Never told my kids what to do, right? So through discussion, I like to empower people to be aware right, of their powers. And I know it sounds very abstract for people. It sounds very abstract. But I believe that success in the first step is you being happy from the inside. I agree. Then comes all the other things. <laughs> but if you're not happy from the inside, and many, many, many people, they're experts who can show you another face, they're smiling and happy and jumping up and down and everything. But when you get down to the core of things, they're actually crying on the inside. Yeah. And that's where I like to come to to come to that child, to that inner person who's crying and say, hey, I am here for you, let's move it. And this is one of the reasons why I do my 24 hour bike ride where I did that two weeks ago is to demonstrate that a day is not only 24 hours, it's 1,440 minutes and it's my favorite, it's 86,400 seconds <laughs> and no second more. So I like to help people. Now I say people in general, but I'm coming back to my women, <laughs> right? Um, to understand that you can have a choice, create choices every three seconds. Mm -hmm. Often you just need three seconds. Many times, many people say, well, I just get into a rage and then I scream and I say, give yourself three seconds, say 21, 22, 23, and see if you still want to scream at the person. <laughs> and if, it, if you still want to scream, then go ahead. But, you know, make it a conscious decision. Make it a decision you have made. So if you have a problem at 2 a.m., you can't sleep, you're in bed. I've had people say, you know, I can't sleep and um, I tried this, I've tried that. Then I say, well, do you have more than one room to live in yeah so leave your bedroom if you cannot sleep in your bed respect that place as a place where you sleep and if you cannot sleep leave that spot so by having this respect <laughs> you start learning how to you know you only come into that room when you're going to sleep and boom people say hey it worked i said yeah i know i've, done, I've helped many people who have talked about this and somebody else shared this with me so practical skills yeah. So it becomes very, very difficult 
If you say, tell me in an elevator pitch what you do, I can't and I don't want to. I don't want to prove to you. So why should I work with you? What qualifications do you have? I just, that just turns me off completely. Me too. You really, com turns me off completely. <laughs> so so uh, if, I'm, if I'm going to be in the business of convincing people, you know, that, you know, they have to, you know, be aware of certain things, mm -hmm. study certain things for themselves. And I'm telling them that they have to do that themselves. And there's nobody else who can do it for them. We can only discuss the results. So that's me again. Oh, my phone is just vibrating here. Excuse me. <clears throat> right? So, yeah. so for me, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. And all people, every single person I've worked with, always found value with that what I do. And my coaching technique is very simple. It's the first session where I charge you for the first session and it's divided into three parts. The first part is we have our conversation because I have to give you homework. I have to give you homework. If you do the homework, you can come back for free coaching the next day. Speed of implementation. And if you do the homework again, I give you free coaching for the second time because you're a doer. I like action takers, not talkers, action takers. And then I offer you a coaching program package, which extends for one month. And you come every day, Saturdays and Sundays too, if you wish. And they're usually five minute sessions, maybe 30 minutes sometimes, but you got to keep doing, you got to keep, I've got to get you into action doing the things you have to do whilst falling madly in love with yourself. So Cassandra, I'll be asking you, what do you do with your me time? Oh, definitely. Your me time. Yes. What's your me time? When do, how do you spend? I read. Your... I read. Right. I inspired reading. Wonderful. Wonderful. Right. Because some people believe that um, spending time with the family uh, spending time with the kids, going out for a walk is me time. I say, no, no. What builds you? What builds you? And that's one of the reasons why I got divorced. Because my me time is with my family, with my kids as well. My ex-wife said, you know, let's go skiing for a weekend. And we leave the kids with the grandma. What? Leaving the kids with the grandma? Watching TV? being told, don't do this, don't do that the whole time. And we're skiing. I said, it doesn't work. <laughs> Let's take the kids with us. Let, and she says, no, but I just want to spend time with you alone. I don't want to spend time with the kids and you. And I said, well, the time will come when the kids are old enough that they can choose to stay with grandma and then we can do our thing. And she said, no, I don't like that. The kids are more important to you than I am. And I had to pause. I took a pause and I said, you know what? Do you remember when we got married? I promised to be an excellent father to our kids. And I asked the kids, is it okay if you stay with grandma? Or do you want to go skiing with us? Don't tell them where we're going. I said, no, of course I have to tell them where we're going. We're going skiing. Do you want to go skiing with us? Or do you want to stay with grandma? And the kids said, we want to go skiing. Boom. So everybody in the Jump in the car and we're all going skiing. Yeah, but you have to do all the skis. You have to do all that. You're going to be tired. Yes, I missed the movie. I get really tired, tired to the bone. But I still took the time and I was happy to be with my kids. And that's me time for me. It builds me up, spending the time with the family, the whole family, right? So never complained. Late nights, two in the morning, the child walks up to me and says, listen, dad, I can't sleep. Can we go and play? I say, but it's 2 a.m. You know, most people are sleeping right now. So what do you want to play? Can we play for five minutes? And then, then we go to bed. Yeah, okay, we play for five minutes. Then we go to bed. No problem, right? So this is me. These are the experiences I've had. And this is what has built me. I've built my character. And I can, I can turn on my energy. Even right now, I could, just, I could make it go up even higher. I'm so grateful 
for the opportunities I've had to develop myself to be the person who I am right now. And so helping people, helping people, helping the women understand spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, and financial fitness. Right? This is, these are the the, the, the five that I believe in. And fitness, I'm going to ask you, how would you define fitness? It's a very important point for me. How would you define fitness? How do I define yes, it? Yes. For me, it's it's doing the things that gets me centered, that gives me um, energy and helps me feel good about me. So sometimes it's yoga, sometimes it's a walk, sometimes it's meditation, breathing. Right. right. And this is one of the things I love to ponder the fundamentals for years. Mm. You know, I ponder the fundamentals for years. So, so I, I always have a thrill in discussing the fundamentals. And the fundamentals can't be a hundred things, right? Otherwise, it's not fundamental anymore. They're just a few things, right? Mm -hmm. And then you hear the perspectives of other people for the fundamentals. So, Aaron, how would you define fitness? For me, I would say fitness is about an integration of what I do aligning with the things that I value and the things that I, I uh, think. So stuff that I feel, stuff that I think, um, those, you know, those combined create my perspective and the things that I, the things that I feel about the things that I do, those are the things that I value. So the, the, the stuff that I do needs to be in alignment with those values. Otherwise, I'm not, I'm not an integrated person. I don't have integrity. I'm not, I'm not becoming more fit as a unit. Um, so for me, it's, it's all about uh, continual adjustment and alignment of who am I going to be? Am I doing the things that are making me that more of that person. Okay, wonderful, right? And this is also an example. When I work with somebody, we have to discuss the fundamentals and agree what we're going to call them during our coaching sessions or for our coaching period or whenever we meet, right? So it's very important because um, if everything is gonna be based on the fundamentals, mm -hmm. then we gotta be speaking the same language. So for me, Fitness is your ability to recover, to come back to your neutral state after exertion. So let's take running. If, you're, if you run a marathon, for example, the guy who usually, or the girl who usually, the person, otherwise my daughters will jump on my throat for using words, you know, I've got to learn the new language, right? So the person who wins the marathon, usually you can look at them, you know, especially if it's like on the two hour mark and you could say, oh, have they, have they been running already or are they about to start running? Then you, cause you don't know. They're so fit. They look recovered already <laughs> you know, and they've, they've finished the race. So, it's not the exertion. If I put a gun to somebody's head and said, listen, you're going to run a marathon now or I'll kill you. They probably run the marathon if they don't want to die, but they're not fit. And then they'll be, they'll need therapy for the next 10 years because they ran a marathon uh, that they were not fit for, right? They couldn't recover. So the recovery rate, not the exertion rate. So if I say, how fit are you financially? You lose all your money. You make no money. How quickly can you earn your money back? That's your fitness level, you know, uh, physical fitness, spiritual fitness. So for me, it's that ability to recover. So when I talk about fitness, how fit are you? How fit are you for life? 
you know, how fit are you in your relationship, in your relationships? For example, you have an argument with your, your partner. How fast can you sit together and drink a glass of coffee or a glass of water? Is it going to be like three months or four months or five months? Like uh, Cassandra was talking about the lady who said, you know, she was, she, she, her husband wouldn't talk to her because she made her own decision. And she had three months or four months of punishment. That's not being fit. You know, you know, so, so for me, I, I tell people that you listen, um, that we're going to get triggered. That's normal. But it's what you do and how long you take to get back. That's important. It's okay to be triggered. It's okay. But it's what you do after that. So that's where, that's where I'm coming from. That's where I'm helping people. And I've got lots of painful stories to share why this evolved in the way that it is. Mm -hmm. And the last story I'd like to share, the last story I'd like to share is how motivation, and there it is, you can see it on my, on my, on my chest, motivation, yeah. how that word came, up, came about. There was a lady in one of my classes, my workout classes. I also do fitness, physical fitness, right? Moved away from that. Because physical fitness is now a tool I use to give people a one, two, three program to help them with their business life, right? So I, I can do that fitness thing still, but it's not the main focus anymore. So this lady, um, she came to my class and I called her the dancer because in the middle of the workout, she would just start dancing in a room which was full. Everybody got upset the first time she did that. So I looked at her and I said, hey, you must be the dancer. And she goes, yes, I am. And, but you know, the room is very small. We can't have one person dancing and 29 just making space for her when I'm the teacher in the class. So we did just workout exercises. I stopped all the dancey moves because of, that behavior. And that went on for five years. People said I should throw out the class. I said, no, she paid her money. She, she's got the right to be here. And if she keeps coming, she'll keep coming. So one day the dancer came up to me five years later and she gave me a piece of paper. I still have it up there. And inside it was a five euros. You know, I live in, in Austria, five euro note in it wrapped in and she put it in my hand. And she said to me, you are the best instructor I've ever come across. And my son is going to invite you to come to an event. Will you come? And I thought, yeah, sure. I will come, right? And then she hugged me. There was no hugging. That was the first hug I've ever had in 25 years from these people. They don't touch you. And she hugged me. And she said, God bless you and your family. I remember those words very clearly. And because I was teaching another class back to back, she quickly left. Two weeks later, the phone rang. It was the son. And the week before that, the dancer didn't show up. So the son said to me, oh, you know, oh, I'm Mr. Move It. Um, I'm the son of the dancer. And I said, yes. She told me that you're going to call me. And he said, yes, Mr. Move It, you are invited to the funeral of my mom. And I said, um, now she sa he said this in German. So I thought, you know, maybe I didn't understand him right, right? Because he sounded happy. And I didn't want to, I didn't want, I didn't want to make a mistake. I don't want to make mistakes like that. So I said, uh, where? And then he said, oh, you know, at the terminus of the tram number seven. Down there, there is this, there's this graveyard. And I said, what? He said, graveyard? And I said, I've never seen one there. I've gone past that cycling so many times. And he says, oh yeah, next to the flower shop. So I went there expecting to see the whole group of people who I teach. And I knew nobody on that Thursday at 10 a.m. in the morning. And he came up to me and he says, oh, Mr. Move It, please come here. And at this funeral with about 60 people, he had a chair right next to the, the coffin. And he said, Mr. Move it, please take a seat. 
And I was like, what's happening here? I'm important at <laughs> this funeral. And as I was sitting there, he opened up his scroll and he was a very educated man. And his wife was next to him and she was highly pregnant. And he said, my mom was right again. This is how he began. My mom was right again. She said, Mr. Move It will, will be here today. And mom, you're right. This is Mr. Move It sitting here. And I was going, what's happening here? Then he went on to read the story, how his mom was depressed for the last 15 years. He said, oh, I've only known her five, right? I've only known her five. And she left the house once a week, 8 a.m. Monday morning to come to my class. It's the only time she left her house for five years. Hmm. And I was going, and something came up to me. And I heard this voice. It was my own voice because I've heard myself on speakers. I do a lot of shows. I know how my voice sounds. When I listen to the replay of this thing, I know my voice. And I heard my own voice say, motivation. That's when the word came up, motivation. You do too little with just the movement, up and jumping up and down with people. You can give the people far much more. Come on, saddle up. And that's where the word motivation was born. And then it evolved to Aaron Tivation and Cassandra Tivation because I'm always pressed with time to explain what I do. So I just say, you know, I miss the move it, motivation. You're Aaron, Aaron Tivation. Whatever moves you, that's what I do. I help you get there. Got it. So that's, that's the whole evolution of the whole thing. And there is zero flexibility to what my life purpose is, right? So I have no flexibility. There's nothing I'm going to adjust or change or whatever. I'm here to give people that helping hand. And I would love to have the people who are making the big money share it so that I can help the smaller people who are not yet making the money learn how to make the money so that they can pay it forward or pay them back or whatever it is. But we need to teach people the skills of running a business, the business skills. And this is why I, the next point I'm going to mention, this is why I say selling is service. Selling is social. Selling is sweet. And I've just sold you basically my whole philosophy. This is like a sales call right now. Mm -hmm. It's sales. That's what I'm doing. I'm selling you my philosophy. So if somebody says, oh, don't sell. Why? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Why shouldn't I sell? Yes. I'm, and when I, when I came in here and you said, oh, and Aaron said, oh, Masara, won't you, Mr. Move It? And I'm so happy. He said, Mr. Move It. He said, introduce yourself. My brain heard, sell yourself. Tell us who you are. Sell yourself now. And I said, right, I am Masara, Mascara, without the C. You know, then I went into my sales pitch, introducing myself. That's it. it we're selling everything. So if you, feel, if you feel cramped up, if you feel tight when you hear the word sales, when that, when that, then you need my help. I need, to, I need to make you say, wow, I love selling. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so in the morning when you wake up and you talk to your partner or your kids or your spouse or somebody else, you sell them a good morning. Yeah, you say, good morning. Would you like some tea or coffee? Sell it to them. And some people will tell you, especially in English, in German it's the same, you will tell them something and they'll say, I'm not buying it. Have you ever heard somebody say that to you? Yeah. Yeah. Right, because you're selling. <laughs> right. Because you're selling, you're always selling. So I'm so passionate that people who, are, who want to make money online and offline should fall in love, madly in love with sales, just like they fall in love with themselves. And anything I would sell you, Cassandra, or sell you, Aaron, I would sell my kids, and I love my kids. Anything. So selling is great. It's perfect. It's great. And this is the major message that I need to get across to all the experts 
who are already experts in what they do and are making no money. It's because they haven't got this CEO, CFO, CMO part going for them yet. And they have to understand that you're running a business, right? So for me, my challenge, my challenge is to get the people on that call and dare I say it, and I'm going to say it, get them on that sales call where we sell each other. Basically, that's it. You don't have to buy. I never said you have to buy, but we're selling each other. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this, is, this, is, this is the thing. I, you know, I've spoken to so many, even men right now, but a lot of women where you, you see the whole enthusiasm of what they do, how they do it, everything. And when it comes to this point of sale, the POS, they just crumble. They just, you know, it's like, well, you know, um, yeah, I'll take a donation. Uh, I'll do it pro bono. I've been doing this for so long. And, you know, people love what I do. I say, whoa, what's something's gone wrong. It's the mindsets. So we need to have that conversation. And usually in 90 days, if we do every day, five minutes every day, every day, every day, five minutes every day, then after 90 days, you should have managed to sell yourself that you're worth the money in exchange as energy for what you're doing. And what you're doing is got 10 times, 100 times more value than the money you're receiving. So you're giving much more than you're receiving. And that's fair. And the universe is rewarding you as well. So that's, that's my message. That's my message. That's where I'm coming from. That's where I'm going, you know? So, yeah, that, that's basically it. That's basically I love that. It. Love that. What, what I like about your philosophy, Masara, is that it aligns a lot with uh, what I feel about business is if you're, if you're trying to copy a system from somebody else, it... Um, it might work great for you if you're willing to just submit to the process, surrender, and just do the things. Um, you know, a business that is that is built as a successful machine, you can copy and rebuild that machine. Um, but what you're about, and I think what a lot of people who are heart centered struggle with, is like, do I have the motivation and the energy and the passion to build a business that really belongs to somebody else? It's like, I'm building, I'm building a machine that it's like, I didn't invent this thing. This isn't what really excites me. And so we're, we're trying to create something in somebody else's image that really isn't, doesn't reflect the person that we are. And what I, when I'm hearing you talk about motivation and helping people uh, fall in love with sales, fall in love with their business, what I'm really hearing is are you looking closely uh, no, at the caller. business that you're building, building and are you making it into an extension of who you are so that working on your business is something that you love because working on your business is the same as working on yourself, yes. getting on a sales call, yes. networking with people, yes. building the things that are boring, the spreadsheets, those sorts of things. Those yeah, exactly. are you. Those are the yes. things that you do yes. to take care of yourself because the business that you own is an extension of you. And yes. a lot of and us- actually the business, the business, the business is spiritual and you are spiritual. Business is spiritual. If you get yeah. that, if you get that, then you, you and your business, you're one. I think there's a, I think there's a lot of people who, if they I haven't consciously that. come to that idea, they, they, they sense it. A lot of the heart, heart centered entrepreneurs, they feel this sense that, kind of what they're creating, um, their business is in some way, it's another child. It's another, um, it's another way that they can put themselves into the world. And I think that's why a lot of people struggle when it's like people are telling them, you need to do it this way. You have to do it this way. Um, you know, they're not given a lot of freedom to express themselves really fully through their business. And what I love that what you're doing is you're giving people a way back to themselves, back Absolutely. to the thing that lights them up, Absolutely. motivates them to 
I want to do this because it's who I am, not because what I'm going to get out of building the business, but it's like, I, this is the person that I am. And the person that I am is going to build this thing to help other people. It took me five years to come up with this phrase. Mm. Show me what you want to tell me. Mm. Don't tell me. Oh, I'm an honest person. Oh, I'm ethical. Oh, I care about, don't, don't tell me. Don't just show me, <laughs> please. People, yeah. everybody, the scammers, they tell you that as well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how do I differentiate you now from a scammer? You know, listen to me. I'm honest. You know, everything I'm telling you is the truth. Yeah. So if I can just, before we wrap up, yeah. Cassandra, what resonated with you in the things that uh, Mastara shared? Like he told some stories. He explained a little bit about what it is that he does with people. What were some of the things that stuck out to you that made you feel like, mm, that's something I really like what you're doing. That's something that I resonate with, that I appreciate about you. What are, what are the values that leapt out to you that you're like, that's something I would share with somebody? Well, I, I like the thing about that um, selling your service because it takes so much away from me um, because that's what I feel I do. And then the spiritual part is really what I feel like I'm doing. So because of all the stories I bring and all the people that have crossed my path who've taught me have come out of my spirituality in, in whether it's the Native American people or people working with um, the Aborigines or you know, tribes in Africa, or you know, it's just women stories throughout cultures, throughout time and men's and how to, and that's the stories I tell that resonate. So it's the spiritual stuff that I'm bumping into that I've never heard anywhere else. So that's so that just reinforced that this is what I need to get away from what I'm being told by all these other people. What you're saying makes so much hits my heart, my mind, my heart and soul is like, yes, then I was on the right track to begin with and nothing's worked since I tried to do the traditional business model at all. I've just been sinking and putting so much time. And somebody said to me yesterday, Cassandra, why did you go back to where you were successful and what you did back then? I didn't pay attention to business. It just came. And so I'm like, how did I do that before? Because I didn't advertise. People just came because I was me talking from my heart, not trying to do all this bullshit. So what you're saying is I know how to track my numbers. I know I'm real good at stuff like that, but this putting it all together, learning all these skills they want you to do, do all this advertising. And you're, you're just letting people tell people. And that's the best way. You're just being in your heart, your soul, you're using your stories. Um, yeah, I really resonated with this. This was really helpful a lot. So I'm really grateful that you were on this call, Masara. Um, it much. just was, it just was perfect, both you and Aaron. And you have to know something. I'm going to tell you this. I've never been the only female on a call and ever been comfortable. And you two guys have hit everything that I needed to hear today. So I think spirits here, period. <laughs> 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 wonderful wonderful i'm sure cassandra you know that we are first spirit mm -hmm. having a human experience right, right? yes right? so so spiritually we're all connected correct right so so that's that's for me um a very important point mm -hmm. um that we know that on the spiritual level we're all connected and right. spiritually we cannot make a mistake this is the way I see it. I love that. I'm so happy to hear that you um, that you connected so much, Cassandra. And Masara, I'm super happy that you came and shared who you were. It's it's such a good example um, of what I what I want to impress on people. This is the part that like I'm sharing what I know, hopefully with the people that helps in this community. But what you just did, Masara. You shared who you were through the stories, through the examples of what it is that you do. And Cassandra resonated with that. That's what you should do in your business. If you can tell a story that gives people an insight into who you are, to what you value, why you're here, how you want to help them, that's what's going to make people attracted to you. That's what makes them want to engage with you. That's, that's how you help them feel seen in your business. Because 
the thing that we all want from our business is we want people to be attracted to our business. We want, we want people to uh, engage with our business. We want our business to be seen so that we can help more people. Well, the thing that we want, we have to give. We have to give people the experience of being seen. We have to give people the opportunity to engage when they feel attracted to the things that we're putting out. So, <clears throat> and one point I'd also like to add right there. That story. Go ahead. I'd like to add right there is we have to give people the opportunity to happily buy from us. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And it <clears throat> starts. It starts with. Or do you do you have something that they want that they can understand as soon as they meet you? And a story for me is the fastest and most efficient way to do that in a way that's safe, in a way that cares for people, in a way that's free. So you're not coming up with, here's my sales pitch, but you tell a story <laughs> so they, they see, oh, I want that experience. I want the thing behind that story. I don't want to be the person in the story. I want to be me having a similar experience. So thank you guys so much. I hope I, I'm, I hope this is helpful. Cassandra, I, no, when we absolutely. talked the other day, um, I know amazing. you just felt like a little bit uh, in like, I need some help. I, and you, you, you even said at the beginning of this call, like I, I made this decision to put my big girl pants on. Like I need to do the things I need to do. Where do you feel like you're at right now? Like, what do you feel like, um, this conversation has done for you? And do you feel like you're able to- I'm not, really I'm gonna tell you this. And I know that you probably already know this, Masara. I was afraid to be seen. I was afraid to show my story. I was afraid to talk because I didn't know how to really feel comfortable. I, I'm so afraid of traumatizing people, but you gave me that safe way to say, and this is where I am today. And this is what it brought me. If you're having struggles with this, I'd love, you know, I'd love to work with you, love to help you out so you can get the joy out of life you deserve. So it comes easy then. It's just really easy for me to say that. Hmm. So wonderful. that was wonderful. wonderful. I mean, I'm like, feel like a hundred times blessed. You have no idea, you guys. <laughs> oh, and really and joy. One, little, one little thing I'd like to add, what I've seen, it's your lights, camera, action. You're comfortable on video. Yeah. You're comfortable. I can see you've got that because many people who I meet, oh, I don't want to turn on my camera and I don't want to say, yeah, you're an entrepreneur. You got to go through that. <laughs> you got to turn on your camera. Yeah, but my clients don't turn on the camera. Well, that's them. You turn on your camera, you show up, show total focus, show that you're doing nothing else. Some people turn off the camera so that they can be doing other things in the background. Correct. Right? And Correct. they're using you as a radio in the, you know, no, don't do that. Show people respect by dedicating the time you've allocated for them to them. Correct. And building, starting that respect is what builds that friendship. Building that friendship is what brings you the money. Mm. Because then people will want to buy from you. You know, you know yes. they talk about the no like and trust. There are other steps before that. Yeah, yeah. There are other steps Be totally before totally present for that person. Yes. You need yes. to hear them see and show them, them respect. Exactly, exactly. Right? And and that's it. And and be just do you. You know, we're here, the three of us. We all look different. Nobody looks like a cop. But even if you copied my sentences one to one, it wouldn't help because I'm me and you are you. Right. <laughs> right? right. So right. so we have that. You don't have to say, well, you know, I've got eyes. I have a nose. Everybody can see that. And every, when I see you again, Cassandra, believe you me, you are so niched down to being you that you only, the only one that fits in your category. And that's why you're Cassandra. Yeah. So next time I meet you, I'm going to say, oh, Cassandra. Well, <laughs> because that's how you were made. You are, you are an entity by yourself already, this whole sea of people. So there's no need for me to say, well, I'm being this. You, I can see it. We can all see that. Just do you. Thank do you. you. Do Thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> and I just rebel rouse all the time because I put, you know, I'm me, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yes. people go, 
who the hell says <laughs> that me <laughs> right and then and then and then you know like the revenue goals and all these things these are things that people can learn if you have the right skill sets the right business mindsets and skill sets business system all these things we need that we all need that most of us have got a car right yeah it's a system it takes us from one place to another Correct. all cars are just systems right but we use them for different things yes we do need a business system but it's me driving when i'm driving i drive differently from you same car <laughs> same car right so 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 it's okay it's okay to and it's okay to make money it is it this is this is my this is my major message is it okay for you to have a sustainable business model and the only sustainable business model there is is one that creates revenue yes if you're not making any money and you're doing things pro bono it's not a sustainable business model it's not sustainable no no right and i we don't cash flow. i don't I'm just having trouble getting out there because I wasn't feeling yeah. confident anymore because I'm getting told, well, you can't do it that way. You can't do it this way. You can't do it that way. And I'm like, but, my, <laughs> but I know how I learned. I couldn't take all that. I can't do a full program. I just need to get what I need in this one moment. So, yes. and I liked your five minute thing. Check in. Yeah, five minutes. yeah, me. I, I'm so intense. I, t I warn my clients. I tell them, listen, um, just before they pay, I say, um, maybe you don't want to do this. I want to talk you out of it because I expect you to come for five minutes every day for 21 days. Mm. I, I expect you to feed, give me feedback for 21 days straight, every single day, even weekends. Yes, even weekends, <laughs> right? You give me feedback because I need you to get into the momentum of moving it like me when i ride my bicycle for, for 24 hours how long do you think i'm riding my bicycle for 24 hours <laughs> that's the goal right so so there is there is no there is no compromise there you got to do it so you just got to do it for 90 days straight every day five minutes five minutes every day every day let's go let's go let's go let's go and you know what i can tell you right now Three from a hundred will do it. And I'm not forcing anybody. I'm never forcing anybody to do anything. Never. But I'm encouraging you to say, you have to do it. Just do it. And then the best thing I love, what my kids would also share with you, I don't like the just do it thing. That's marketing. That's selling. Just done it. Ah, that's what I love. <laughs> what did you tick off today? I ask my kids before they go to bed. So what did you do today? What did you tick off? What can we celebrate? No, what did you want to do? We all got lists of things we want to do. I want to know what did you do today? You know, and that's, and whatever it is, we celebrate. I wrote a list. I did nothing on the list, but I wrote the list. Yeah, you had a list done. <laughs> Wonderful. Great. So good night to you. You know, just celebration time not bashing time. Yeah. You want to celebrate yourself to sleep. You know? <laughs> yeah, and that's so important for kids too and adults. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, just to get your mind set so that you relax enough into sleep and just you know, it just the difference in your heart, different in your mind doing one or the other. So, appreciating who you are growing into. Is what I say. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Masara, before we before we go, biggest takeaway. What what can what stuck out for you? The fundamentals are the same. The fundamentals, you know, whoever I meet, um, the fundamentals are the same. And I think the challenge, the cash flow challenge, I would love it if the three of us were billionaires right now because we'd have enough money to serve other people, you know, by giving this money energy, opening the motivation institution, you know, motivation has got three pillars, nutrition, movement, physical exercise, and inspiration to self-motivation. Those are the three things. These are the fundamentals that everybody needs. Everybody needs. So 
My takeaway again is that, look, we've just proved we're human. We've just proved that we are us. <laughs> yeah, we've just proved that we do have a purpose and a mission. And I could feel the energy like I always do. And this is going somewhere. This is going somewhere. And to those who are out there who also feel they want to go somewhere, I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. Even just the story. Now you know that I'm all into sales and it's a sales call and we talk and we sell each other. Now you know that. So reach out to me and let's just get to know each other. Sell ourselves friendship. Just friendship. Conversation. And I'm a little bit a private person, you know, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't just expose certain stories. You know, I try to hold them back because this, you know, things are private, right? Yes. Um, and if somebody gives me permission to share their story, I usually don't do it. I say, you jump onto my call and you share it for them, <laughs> right? Mm. Because, you know, I, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure because I want to go deep. I want you to dig deep to go where you are because it's your birthright to serve others. Mm. It's your birthright to be happy. It's your birthright to be you. I love it. Love that very Thank much. You. Yes. Thank you both for being here. I appreciate it. I hope this was uh, was helpful for you. I was amazing. Very. Thank you very much. So right. thank well, you. Well, I appreciate for your this. time. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see the next group uh, later this afternoon. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Blessings, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.